For decades, launching rockets has been a slow and careful process. After each flight, teams would spend weeks or even months inspecting hardware, replacing worn-out components, and preparing for the next mission. Even the most advanced reusable rockets in history have had long turnaround times between launches, with every step documented, tested, and verified before another liftoff. This cautious approach has been the standard because in rocketry, a single overlooked issue can mean the loss of a mission, or worse. But over the past few years, one company has been quietly rewriting those timelines, steadily proving that preparing a rocket for its next flight doesn't have to take nearly as long as it used to. That shift has been happening step by step, faster repairs, shorter test schedules, and more streamlined rollout procedures. Hardware is now being checked, refitted, and cleared for flight in record time, with teams moving in a tight rhythm that would have been unthinkable in the past. Instead of waiting weeks to see the first signs of preparation after a launch, we're now watching major milestones happen in a matter of days. And the most recent campaign has pushed this pace to an entirely new level, setting up a challenge that could completely change expectations for how quickly a massive rocket can be turned around for its next mission. If you want to stay updated on every major milestone and breakthrough like this, make sure to subscribe. You'll get the full story behind each record, each test, and each launch. In the days following the last Starship flight, the scene at Starbase was anything but quiet. Crews were already on the launch pad, repairing systems that took a beating during liftoff and landing. The orbital launch mount's quick disconnect system, the hardware that connects the booster to ground support for fueling and power, had absorbed the full force of 33 Raptor engines at full thrust. The heat, vibration, and debris left visible damage. Normally, restoring such a system to working condition can take several weeks, especially for something this complex and critical. Yet in this case, repairs were finished in a fraction of that time, with the mount cleared and ready for hardware in barely over a week. Meanwhile, inside the massive Mega Bay assembly buildings, preparations for the next flight hardware were already well underway. The booster selected for the upcoming mission wasn't a brand new build, but a previously flown one. That choice alone carries major advantages for speed. A booster that has already gone through a full flight test doesn't need the same level of deep inspection as a completely unflown vehicle. Engineers already know how it performs, where the wear points are, and which systems can handle another flight without replacement. This allows them to focus only on targeted repairs and upgrades, avoiding the time-consuming process of checking every single system from scratch. While work on the booster advanced, teams were also making changes to the upper stage known as the ship. One of the most notable developments was an engine swap, removing a Raptor engine and replacing it with another in just hours. Engine changes on rockets have traditionally been rare and slow, requiring careful alignment, plumbing, and testing before the new engine can be trusted for flight. Doing this quickly, and in parallel with booster preparations, shows how much SpaceX has optimized its workflow. They've built their production and integration systems to allow for this kind of high-speed swap without delaying the broader launch schedule. The real turning point in this buildup was the booster's return to the launch pad for a static fire, the critical test where all engines are ignited while the rocket is held in place. In past campaigns, this step could take a month or more to reach after a flight, largely because ground systems needed thorough inspection and hardware required full preparation. But this time, the booster rolled out, was lifted into position by the giant Mechazilla arms, and fired all 33 Raptors in a full-duration burn just 12 days after the last mission. For a vehicle this size and complexity, that speed is almost unheard of. It's a clear indicator that the teams aren't just keeping pace, they're, they're accelerating it with each flight. All these steps the rapid pad repair, the streamlined booster prep, the quick engine swap, and the near-immediate static fire have set the stage for a turnaround that could redefine what's possible for large rocket operations. In the past, the industry measured reusability in terms of how many months it took to get a rocket flying again. Now we're looking at timelines being compressed into weeks, and in this latest case, even less than that. 
the upcoming launch isn't just about testing the rocket's hardware, it's about proving that a massive, fully reusable launch system can be ready to fly again three times faster than before. The record-setting pace began the moment Booster 15 was confirmed for the next flight. This wasn't speculation. The rollout, pad integration, and full-duration static fire were all locked in far earlier than anyone expected. Normally, after a Starship flight, the schedule looks something like this. Two to three weeks for pad repairs, at least another week to position and connect the next booster, and then one or two weeks for testing before the first static fire. That's an average of five to six weeks before a booster is even test-fired. This time, SpaceX did it in just 12 days from the previous launch, roughly three times faster than their own best pace so far. A major factor in this speed is the reuse of flight-proven hardware. Booster 15 had already completed a full mission during Flight 8, which meant its structural and propulsion systems had real flight data to validate their condition. Instead of tearing the vehicle down for an exhaustive piece-by-piece -piece inspection, SpaceX could focus only on known high-stress areas. They swapped out any components showing early wear, double-checked the tanks, plumbing, and avionics, and cleared the rest. This approach eliminates weeks of work without compromising safety because it's backed by detailed engineering knowledge from previous flights. The ground systems also played a huge role. The quick disconnect arm that feeds propellant into the booster had taken serious damage during the last launch. In earlier years, that kind of repair might have sidelined operations for a month. But SpaceX had modularized key components so that damaged sections could be replaced quickly instead of rebuilt in place. Teams had the BQD operational in about seven days, ready for booster hookup and fueling tests. By designing ground support systems with rapid maintenance in mind, they've removed one of the biggest bottlenecks in launch preparation. Then came the static fire itself, a full duration burn of all 33 Raptor engines on booster 15. In the past, SpaceX often ran a smaller test first, firing just one or a few engines to confirm systems were stable before attempting a full ignition. Skipping directly to the full static fire saved days in the timeline, and doing it without issues showed a high level of confidence in the vehicle's readiness. This wasn't reckless. It was the result of months of data-driven refinements in engine reliability, fueling procedures, and ground control systems. Another subtle but important detail was the simultaneous work on Ship 38, the upper stage for this mission. SpaceX didn't wait for the booster to clear its tests before starting on the ship. Both were being prepped in parallel. That included an engine swap just hours before the booster static fire, showing that the integration schedule for the ship and booster no longer needs to be strictly sequential. This kind of overlap is key if SpaceX wants Starship launches to eventually happen on a regular, airline-like schedule. By compressing all these processes, hardware prep, pad repairs, engine integration, and full testing into such a short window, SpaceX has demonstrated that Starship turnarounds can be pushed far beyond what anyone thought possible for a rocket of this size. If this pace holds, future launches could happen on a monthly or even bi-weekly rhythm. And when combined with the long-term goal of catching and reusing boosters directly from the launch tower, the cost and time to fly again could drop even further. This isn't just faster. It's a leap toward making Starship as operationally responsive as commercial aircraft. And that's a milestone that could reshape the economics of spaceflight entirely. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.